hi, and welcome back to another episode of Leaving the Farm only on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. We are a listener-supported radio station, where if you would like to donate, please visit our support pages at freedomslips.com. I'm praying that everybody is well tonight. Um, We'll just get into it. Uh, On the raw story today, we've got Florida policemen accused of forcing women into sex and groin punching during a traffic stop. Two uh, Lauderdale, Florida police officers were arrested Friday and charged with simple battery and unlawful compensation for allegedly forcing a woman into having sex with one of them and ordering one to punch the other in their groin to avoid arrest. Now, let's delve into that a little bit, shall we? Um, from Psychology Today, a paraphilia is a condition in which a person's sexual arousal and gratification depend on fantasizing about and engaging in sexual behavior that is atypical and extreme. Now, let's go delve into psychopathy, shall we? From Vanderbilt University, Vanderbilt News, psychopaths' brains are wired to seek rewards no matter what the consequences are. Now, what we're dealing with is a society full of psychopathy. And, um, you know, this week we've been having arguments left and right over a Facebook um, incident where, A man was being beaten and intimidated, harassed, threatened, um, and he had told his wife that he was going to leave, and eventually she had pulled a knife on him, yada, yada, according to the police reports anyway. And so he had executed her and shot her in the head, or it in the head. And my argument is, is that he removed a psychopath from the ability to harm and from the quote chatter around the media alternative media mainstream media and everything else everybody is assuming that she's a female everybody is assuming that she's a mom because there was a child there however she was able to view him as an object in order to be beating on him in the first place And so we need to be aware of what we're dealing with, what a psychopath is. They have no human emotion, they have no compassion, and they view human beings as objects, including children. And the female psychopath um, expressly is very prolific. She's very quiet, and she looks so darn pretty. You know, she's got these little eyes and this little pouty mouth and breasts and a vagina. And she just looks like she can't be actually doing what she's been doing. And so society has given her a lawful pass or legal pass to do such things and relying on the courts by which to, quote, punish her or um, alter her course. She's not going to alter its course because she doesn't have the human concepts that we have. She doesn't feel as a human. She doesn't act as a human. She doesn't walk as a human. It walks as a psychopath, and that is what the res is. She has no idea um, what she is. She's always seeking reward. She's always seeking to find the self And in that, um, she's never at the present tense. She's never here. Um, She's empty. And that is the definition of sin. Uh, Sin in Latin means without. Uh, Moving on, there were some concerns this week. Um, The Department of Homeland Security, as reported on federaljack.com, the Department of Homeland Security says it is illegal to freely play music in the USSA. The Department of Homeland Security... Um, is now demanding through enforcement from the state fire marshals that all live music played in the United States must have a permit from the Department of Homeland Security. Now, when we go visit the BBG, the Broadcasting Board of Governors, um, on their about pages, uh, it stipulates, quote, the Broadcasting Board of Governors, or BBG, is an independent federal agency supervising all U.S. government-supported civilian international media. Now, let's go into that word independent, shall we? From Online Etymology Dictionary or etymonline.com, we find that the etymology on independent is, quote, in, I-N, meaning not opposite of, plus dependent. So you find that, it's in 
a dependent state. The BBG is dependent on Congress, its creator. And when you go back to the story that was shared, the Department of Homeland Security says it is illegal to freely play music in the USA. We find that 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 also is a dependent agency on Congress. Congress created the Homeland Security. Congress created the National Security Act. Congress, therefore, created the National Security Agency. Congress created the National Security Council, which is in the State Department. And these things are all brought forward in um, alignment with national security, contrary to state security. If they were referring to the human being, it would be state security, sovereign state security. That's what you are. You are the sovereign state that they usurped with the Articles of Confederation, especially Article 12 of the Articles of Confederation in 1777. Um, and what that means for you is that, you know, of course, you've been charged and pledged to offset congressional bankruptcy. So one of these um, means is through the uh, 27 CFR 20, uh, 72.11, which is the uh, Code of Federal uh, Regulations. And what you're doing is um, offsetting their bankruptcy by entering into the legal system, uh, entering into the medical system, entering into the psychological system. And perpetually you're producing, and that is the only limitation on usufruct, um, the only rule for for uh, usufructory is that the capacity never diminishes. Well, cap, it stems from the word head, or like a human head or head of cattle. And so your capacity or your earning power, um, your ability never diminishes. And that means if you're not producing through taxation and consumption, you're going to be producing through the medical industry. You're going to be producing through the psychological industry. You're going to be producing through the criminal industry. Um, they've got you coming and going, and Congress is cashing in on everything that happens to you. This is by the people, for the people, of the people. And the people were redefined in the 14th Amendment uh, wherein a person is now a corporation that is a living being. And um, or what they stipulate is the living being according to the 14th Amendment. Um, the All of the other citizens and residents, which means thing, res, um, those are naturalized. They are um, entered in and subject to the Constitution and laws thereof. Um let me see. Uh, from other news this week, um, let's see. Police taught to make eye contact, nod, and be polite in bid to improve satisfaction levels in the UK. This is reporting uh, reported on the Daily Mail. Co. Uk. Um, this is very concerning because, as I said before. The psychopath does not have human emotion. Um, it does not have empathy for other humans, and it's able to view the human as an object. And so if you teach it to uh, present in another way, then it's even more trick and deception. So here's a psychopath that's hiding behind a smile or hiding behind a nod or hiding behind um, uh you know, the eye contact, making you feel like it's, you know, more human than it is when it's only a useful idiot. And you can see this by the court orders requiring the law enforcement have low IQs in order to be manipulated by attorneys, by that board of governors, by congressional action. And um, human beings are still being labeled as the predator when in reality um, this other entity or group of other entities is, um, you know, maintaining the uh, global form of psychopathy. Um, again, we'd like to uh, point everybody to chooseyourside.org. Um, if you if you would like to step out of this system, if you would like to get away from this, if you would like to stop patronizing. Learn how to do that. You are the authority. They have taught you that you are not the authority. And 
going back to the earlier story this week, um, that man, uh, he had killed a psychopath. It was in self-defense. Um, Jesus taught nothing but compassion to justice. And part of that compassion is removing all harm from the ability to harm. And I know this is probably a hard concept for many, many, many to uh, grasp and realize. Um, but this is what self-governing is. And I'll go into that. If you have um, a male or a female psychopath beating your head in or teaching children that this is normalized behavior, this breeds more psychopathy. This breeds normalization within family and within community. And so these entities become normal. Well, I get beat on, but it's okay, she's only my mom. Or I get beat on, but it's okay, she's only my dad. Well, then the child grows up and it becomes psychopathic, and then my children get to bump into that thing, and my children have the potential of dying at the hands of that thing. I do not want this. I'm not going to stand for it. It is not tolerable. It is not acceptable in my mind, in my community, because that is my only predator. Human beings do not have any natural predator. The only thing that preys on us is psychopathy. And we have to get rid- digest ourselves from that thing. We have to get rid of it. And if this is the way it has to be, this is the way it has to be. That is self-governing. And when you go into court, and for example, if I go into court, and I, I did this uh, back in 2010, I was attempted on. Um, I did not go to that particular hearing because it was already gained. And um, when the guy was... You know, assaulting me, everything else. Um, police came out and told me, well, we can't get him for breaking and entering. Um, although I was on the phone with 911 while he was breaking and entering, then they said um, it was domestic violence because he lived on my property. He lived in an RV on my property. And <clears throat> eventually they codified it as if I was an animal. Um, the code said that I was an animal and he had harmed one of Caesar's animals. So I will explain that one. When I go into court and I have been assaulted or raped, that court, which is actually a bank, will charge the predator rent on my body. That is what a charge is. Criminal charges are to charge for rent on the human body. When a child is raped or molested, that bank will charge the perpetrator rent on that child. That bank will cash in. That bank cashes in again while it's in prison. That bank will cash in again and again and again because it's going to play catch and release with that thing. And that thing will be let out into society over and over and over again in order to generate revenue into attorney pockets. Um, I see we have uh, a call on uh, 970, you're on the air. Hi, Jimmy. How are you? My name's Kelly. Uh-oh, I can barely hear you. You're breaking up. How are you? Good. My name's Kelly. Can you hear me okay? Uh, now I can. It's a little bit better. Did you have a okay. question? Um, yeah, I actually have a couple of different questions. Um, long-time listeners, first time calling in. Um, Thank you. Here. The first question I had for you was, um, I've been listening and I've read your forgiveness doc and the executor doc, and I'm just trying to understand, after f- filing these, um, what are the ramifications to, you know, as our, our life as we know it, as far as mortgages and loans? Like, if you want to go get a car and you can't afford it, I mean, can that you, you can no longer get a loan after that? Is that correct? Absolutely not. And and what it is is that you are the authority. We don't act on, on credit, okay? Um, we don't go out and sign any more dead pledges. A mortgage is a dead pledge, mort dead. And what that invokes, um, you have to go all the way back to the 1666 Accessory K Vi Act, but you have been designated lost at sea. If you are lost more than six, or seven years, sorry, um, you can be declared dead or you can help them and declare yourself dead by entering into a mortgage 
which is a dead pledge. So you're saying that you're dead, and at that instance, uh, you're invoking 38 U.S.C. 108, which is no longer the presumption of death. Now you're dead and you have to be used to generate revenue into the coffers to offset congressional bankruptcy. And this is all by trick and deception. Now, when you go, when you first go into that bank and you purchase that home for the first time or when anybody purchases a home through a bank for the first time, they're actually indicating that the bank owns it. Before that, the bank never owned it. They don't have any land. Congress never had any land. It was all by consent. In okay. 1802, so, for example... The Acts of Enablement in 1802, first they indemnified you and, and, and pledged you, you know, and said that you are responsible for all this debt. Second of all, in 1802, through the Acts of Enablement and forward, um, they had cut up the country or what appeared to be a country into districts. And to do that, they had come to you, the human being, all of the, the years at that time in 1802, and they said, look, we, the church would like to donate all this land over to these colleges. And the sheeple stood up and they said, yay, let's do that. Prior to that time, the church never had any land. Congress never had any land. And so what you did was you volunteered that land. It was yours. You just didn't realize it was yours. And ever since, and okay. this is the Northwest Passage. This is um, everything. The Treaty of Versailles, you can read it in the Treaty of Peace. Uh, Spain got all the roads in the Treaty of Peace because they were offsetting congressional bankruptcy. That's why you are ticketed through the Department of Transportation uh, for moving violations or speeding tickets for rolling through a stop sign or, or whatever else. This generates revenue to offset the congressional bankruptcy at that time. If you go back to the, the Treaty of Peace, um, there's the Treaty of Amity, Commerce, and Navigation. So you're being posted. When you accept anything in the mail, in the dead name, the last name that they own, you're actually uh, creating your own bond. You're posting your own bond under 18 U.S.C. 1342 and being maintained as a felon as well. So all of these things, you're being used to offset congressional bankruptcy, including a mortgage, because you're pledging that you're dead. You're saying that you're dead, so there's no longer a presumption that you're dead. Now you're saying that you're dead. Okay, so what would be the correct way to... Um return mail that is addressed incorrectly? I mean, do you just write that on it? Well, what we did was we had a stamp made to make it easier, and it's simply um, uh, unacceptable mail, quote, unacceptable mail as per 18 U.S.C. 1342 return to sender. And if they send it again, they're in violation of 18. USC 1341 because they're trying to communicate with you in order to generate revenue by maintaining as a fiction that they're also a fiction. When you get a bill from uh, your utility company or anyone else, they're a fiction. And they're trying to generate revenue so through that the mail system. Is that considered a felony then to accept a mail that's addressed to a fiction? Yes. Yes, because you're not taking it in the proper name. The proper name is only the first and middle in the United States. It might be, it, it, often in other countries, it's only the first name, the Cranoman. But in, in this country or quote country, um, your first and middle name are not indicated, indicative of a tribe or anything. So the first name is, the Cranoman is usually the first and middle. Like my name is, um, my proper name is Tamara K. Um, but there's still uh, tribal connotations in, um, you know, like India. So you have um, the first name, and then they'll have um, the tribe name or the clan name. And then uh, following that would be like, uh, that's why they use the word sitting. It means uh, male and core means female. So they're indicating male and female in the name. And so you don't want to use those um other names. You only want to stick to the prenomen, which is the proper name defined in Black's Law Dictionary. And this this is uh, quoted in 18 U.S.C. 1342 as well. 18, was it 1842? Uh, 1342. 13, uh, so 18 U.S. 1342? Yeah, I'll read it real quick. Uh, 18 U.S.C. 1342. <coughs> Excuse me. And its title is fictitious um, name or address. 
and it starts out, quote, whoever for the purpose of conducting, promoting, or carrying on by means of the Postal Service any scheme or device mentioned in Section 1341 of this title or any other unlawful business uses or assumes or requests to be addressed by any fictitious, false, or assumed title, name, or address, or name other than his own proper name or takes or receives from any post office or authorized depository mail matter, any letter, postal card, package, or any other mail matter addressed to any such fictitious, false, or assumed name, title, name, or address, or name other than his own proper name shall be fined under this title or prison not more than five years or both. Holy cow. Okay. Um, so, let's see here. I had another question. Um, I... I wanted to know why you have to file or not file, record the forgiveness and executor doc um, after an action has been placed against you. You can't just go do it. Well, you, there's a lot of the times what's happened is they're holding you hostage by patentability. When they did the letters patent, um, way back when uh, John Sons got the ability to patent you if they found you, you've been lost at sea. And so finding you is only the fact that you answered to that name. When you when you go into a hospital, when you're born in a hospital, that legal name is created. You've been found by a founding hospital. When you go into court, you're there as a deposit, you've been found by the court. And and when you go into a bank, you've been found by the bank. That that thing is only a representation of a judge. The court is actually the bank, according to Black's Law Dictionary. If you go to Black's Law Dictionary, um, first edition, let me find it real quick. Sorry. I have a Black Law day. Dictionary, but I only have the sixth edition. All right, yeah, I use, um, and we suggest everybody, uh, you know, get at least, uh, Black's Law, uh, first edition, fourth edition, and somewhere after the seventh uh, edition. So you want seventh, eighth, um, ninth or tenth, because they change according to market conditions. That is the only alteration of these um, dictionaries. It means they're dictating to you what the law is. And when you go all the way back in time to the original dictionaries, they were called lexicons. Lexi, or lex means law, and con means with. So the, those are just with law. They're teaching you what you are, teaching you how to be, giving you all these concepts and all these rights and benefits that come along with the concepts. And these are all fictional characters. That creates you a fictional character in a play. So you're just part of a play all of your life, and you're generating revenue to your transgressor, which means congress. That means with. Gress comes from uh, to uh, tress or, or egress or gress, which means a walk. So here's your walk. You're on a regular walk, and you're on your own path, and somebody comes in and sidelines you with something in your place. And Jesus maintained that that is shutting up the kingdom of heaven. And that's what happened. You've been sidelined. Your kingdom has been shut up because there's a law in your path. There's something now in your path, and you need to be able to overcome that. And that's what the forgiveness and executor doc do. It, it obliterates that statutory ability and maintains that you're expatriated, and patriated into your own house. You're not asking them to represent you any longer, and that's your law. You're legislating them. The definition of bank from Black's Law Dictionary, number uh, first edition, number one, a bench or seat. The bench or tribunal occupied by the judges, the seat of judgment, a court. The full bench or full court, the assembly of all the judges of a court, a sitting in bank is a meeting of all the judges of a court, usually for the purpose of hearing arguments on demurs, points received, motions for new trial, etc., as distinguished from the sitting of a single judge at the Assizes or Nisi Prius and from trials at bar. But in this sense, bank, B-A-N-C, is the more usual form of the word. Number two, an institution of great value in the commercial world, empowered to receive deposits of money, to make loans, and to issue its promissory notes designed to circulate its money and commonly called bank notes or bank bills, or to perform any one or more of these functions. Now, when you go to the definition of deposit, 
Um, let me get there. I'm, I'm looking at the dictionary at this time. Um, out of Black's first edition. Um, sorry, please forgive me for the wait. No worries. <clears throat> um, while you're looking, I did have another question. Um, so it, currently, you know, the place that I live in, I rent, you know, and I'd, I'd like to, you know, practice this and continue and live this way. Um, but I'd like to basically get some property that belongs to me. And so I'm trying to figure out what the process is. If, if I can't get a loan, which is all I've ever known, what, what would be the process? Well, what happened was Congress had come in. We entered into contract with Congress in 1776. And at that point in time, that, that contract ended at Article 1, Section 9, Clause 3. No uh, bill of attainder or ex post facto law shall be passed. Article 1, Section 8, Clauses 1 and 2 maintain that the human being is on general welfare and that the corporations pay taxes in order to maintain you on general welfare and provide for your common defense. Now, that was perverted by the Articles of Confederation, specifically um, Article 12, where you were charged and pledged to offset congressional bankruptcy. And now, since that time, corporations have been maintained on welfare, which is called the uh, Corporate Welfare Theorem, the first and second welfare theorem, uh, to be exact. Read that thing because you, human product, have been uh, usurped in order for corporations to come in and be be living according to the 14th Amendment that the attorney, president, and credit reporter for Dan and Bradstreet displayed at that time, uh, three days prior to the 14th Amendment um, being uh, facilitated by that psychopath. Um, he had done the Expatriation Act, which maintained that attorneys could expatriate at that time in order to repatriate to the bar, which is a fictional government. Now, we just facilitated a case recently, and it's finalized over, and we won, maintaining general welfare. We're just working out the kinks at this time because, of course, they're screaming. They don't want to be held accountable. Um, Senate tried to avoid the um, uh, summons uh, by <laughs> they had opened their their uh, packaging and then resealed it with tape that says open for inspection and returned it to us in order to, I don't know, uh, say they didn't receive it, but of course they received it. We have the evidence that they're in receipt of this information and that it wasn't open for inspection. And, you know, it's, it's just funny. They never thought that they would be held accountable. And now that they're held accountable, they don't know what to do. Um, uh, going back to deposit uh, from Black's Law Dictionary, first edition. A deposit is a naked bailment of goods to be kept for the depositor without reward and to be returned when he shall require it. Now, remember that a naked bailment of goods because when you go to the definition of name, N A A M, from Black's Law Dictionary, um, name, N A A M, signifies that it is goods and chattel and that you've been seized at that thing, which is the last name, of course, because um, property name can't be seized. It's a living being or be living entity. Um, it's not a franchise. It's not an incorporated state. Um, it's just you, the United States of being. And, and, you know, that's what Jesus was trying to teach. Jesus was trying to teach everybody, hey, look, you're I am. Um, I am as the United States of being. You're all one entity. And if you don't wake up now and stop being segregated and secular as maintained by the church and its court, its banks, um, its nomenclature, its record of criminal actions upon you, um, you're going to have a heck of a time being crucified. And that is the crucifixion. Uh, when you go to the Coronation Charter, uh, you have been kept because you're claiming that name. You're claiming to be a dead thing, so you're going to be crucified on that cro cross. You're hanging yourself on that cross because you're subscribing to all of this. You're underwriting, subscribing the policy, the insurance policy, by claiming that name. 
And um, let me go back to it here. So back to my question, which was trying to get a piece of land where I'm not paying rent and I own it, um, but I can no longer do it through the existing system. I mean, is it something where I have to partially use the system and then do like maybe a writ of seizure afterwards or uh, no, I mean, right how do I get out of renting? Right. We've won the case. Uh, they've been indemnified since uh, December. In Jan or uh, no March, uh, we came in and we took their funding through the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. The United States Incorporated is no longer members as of March 8th of this year. And then uh, coming forward in this case, we entered into agreement and a great entry with Northern Holdings, which is a holding corporation for corporate receivership. Now, as a dead thing, you're being held as prisoner of war under the 1929 Geneva Convention. And under that same action, you're being held under corporate receivership because you're claiming the name, which maintains that you are bankrupt. Bankrupt stems from the word depraved. You don't know who you are. And so every time you're claiming that name, you're giving up your inheritance or your estate as the heir because you're only you're invoking what's known as beneficium um, abstinendi, which is your right to uh, abstain the right to be the heir under the doctrine of elections. Under the doctrine of elections, you can only have a, either a right or a benefit, but neither both. And you're never the heir because you're you're subscribing to somebody else's, your father or the parent under parents for try. So here you're, you're asking your daddy to give you a benefit. And so because you've chosen that trustee, the other daddy fiduciary, it's giving you a benefit, but it's holding on to tightly your whole entire inheritance. And that was what the case was in the uh, Northern District of Indiana. We came in and we said, no, 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 you know, this is human trafficking. Article 12 is evidence of human trafficking. Okay, you cannot pledge and charge any human being to offset congressional bankruptcy based on the action of debenture. That's servitude. That's human trafficking on its face. And so they have been held accountable. We're just waiting for everybody else to stand up because they're they're sitting there saying, well, what? What do we do now? Well, they have options. If the United States of being doesn't appear and it doesn't stand up behind us, then, of course, we're going to fail. Right. They control the media. And so all of these sheeple can be presented with all of these lovey dovey things. And and um, oh, we're protecting you over here. Look, we charge this guy. No, that guy was just hooked out. You know, his victim was just a prostitute. The judge was a pimp. They just generated a whole bunch of money. But the sheeple view it as something good. That guy was charged and they're protecting us and we're safe now because they put him in prison. This is a private industry. This is a private industry. There's three forms of production on this planet. One third of the global GDP is in taxation and consumption. One third is in medicine, psychology and death. And one third is in criminalization. So if you're not, if you're not paying your taxes, and you're not consuming like a good little sheeple, you're going to be killed through the medical industry. You're going to be institutionalized through the psychological industry, or you're going to be maintained. You're going to get sick. You're going to be generating revenue until your insurance plays out. And at that time, you become either dead or a criminal. There's no other options. There's only those three forms of production on this planet. Now, the definition of name from Black's Law Dictionary, N-A-A-M, is the attaching or taking of movable goods and chattels called vis or mort, according as the chattels were living or dead. Okay. Now, the male is presumed to be living but lost at sea. The female is presumed to be dead, and but she's, she hasn't been claimed. She's never been claimed by another entity other than her state father since the coronation charter. So that father comes in and it says, well, I own you and I'm going to give you a benefit. I'm going to give you welfare. I'm going to give you food stamps. I'm going to give you housing allotments. I'll give you shoe vouchers for Christ's sakes. And I'm the good guy. But she never gets her inheritance. And in order for her to garner those things, she has to remove the mail from her life. She has to be a single mother. She has to keep breeding when that runs out because every time the kids age out, she's crap out of luck, right? 
She doesn't have anything. She's not a good use if she doesn't have pawns to the game. The definition of name NAM in Old English law. A distress or seizure of chattels. So you claim that name. Go ahead and say you're female. I'll give you all the rights you want. However, dot, 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 you get to be tricked out. Like I said, when I was assaulted and attempted on, they codified it as I was one of Caesar's animals. And so they cashed in. The prosecuting attorney right away under the uh, Violence Against Women Act gets six grand to prosecute that case. I didn't see any of that. So I have a six grand uh, dollar amount placed on my vagina or whatever part of my body that the perpetrator wanted to beat the heck out of. And they cash in on this. Now, that's that's an action of prostitution. That is promoting prostitution. That judge just became my pimp, and the sheep will think that's a good idea. However, let's go into what happens to children, because when children are preyed on by these psychopaths, and children are used, and children are raped and molested, that same bank, bank is charging that perpetrator rent on their bodies as well. Now, that's not a very good system, is it? I mean, do you really want them to represent you in such a way that they're cashing in on everything that happens to you and you're not getting anything? You might get a stripping. You can sue them for damages or injury. But again, you're you're going back into law. Injury. Injury means to put into law. And so everything that happens to you, say your diagnosis is being assaulted. That judge puts in for CMS, right? So he's claiming insurance. That judge just diagnosed you as being brought into law, not harmed, not harmed by no means you were, were you harmed. You were just brought into law, and they just hooked you out. And, and it, you know, these females especially, this is the, the action of hearts and minds. It was It's engineered so that the, the female goes off, and it, it relies on insurance, She's going to go get all of these rights and benefits, but that's the requirement. So she's always injured. So say I'm assaulted right now. First of all, the judge will cash in on my assault. If I go to a psychologist or a psychiatrist and I'm diagnosed with PTSD, that judge is going to cash in on that again. Okay? On top of that, if I'm diagnosed with a mental disorder, they're going to send CPS to my door to take the children off of me. Those children are going to be diagnosed as injured by me because I've been injured. And this cyclical pattern goes on and on and on and on and on and on, and it never ends. You are always producing because the capacity cannot be diminished. So we just have to exit the system and not use it, and that's what I'm trying to do. I just can't figure out how to get out of renting so I can get out of having to go you know, to work every day and I can focus on, you know, producing something that I could sell locally or right. and and I'm just trying to figure soon. out a plan. Right, and this will happen soon. We did win the case. We're just now putting our foot down and everybody needs to stand behind us in order to facilitate this. Otherwise, they can just ignore everything. You know how it goes. If you don't have the media coverage, if you don't have the weight behind things, you're always going to be just crapped on. Uh, we have we'll just 903 ignore it. as well. Just one moment. Uh, 903? Yes. Hi. Uh, hello, Tammy. Uh, Tammy, I've uh, talked to you before, and I put in all my docs, and the police chief resigned. Uh, he's retiring is his words for it, but I think my docs uh, had an effect on that. Uh, what I need to know uh, urgently is how to find the template for water, electric, and uh, cable bills and and how to get uh, uh, my mortgage taken care of and get on uh, the uh, uh, handle my Social Security. Right. The Social Security is yours already. It's not going to be stolen from you uh, because it's part of a strip. And as long as you're not applying for it, after you do the docs, that stays there. The mortgage we need to take care of with an equitable estoppel because in the first place, you know, you, 
there's so many things wrong with a mortgage. The, the beginning is the dead pledge, of course. Second to that is the borrower, or the borrower's covenant, which maintains that you're giving the whole estate lawfully to them to, to raise it. You can't do that. You can never give your body to a pimp, and, and they can never claim your body as, um, as theirs. That's not an enforceable contract. And so we need to step in with that equitable estoppel. Are you in the classes? Am I in what? Are you in the Skype classes with us? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Do you have Skype av av available to you? Uh, did you say Skype? Yes. No. No, I don't. Okay. And you do have an email, though? My friend though? is helping me. Uh, uh, get the documents filed and then he needs to know uh, how to find the template for for uh, getting them to take care of of uh, bills and and the mortgage that's right. sort of urgent now right and the bills um, what those are, are remittance they're they're changing money into money from a prior state so when you get a quote bill or remittance coupon, you're, it's, it's allowing them to alter the form of money that's being used. Before it was you, and then they turn that into, uh, of course, the Federal Reserve note, which is a debt note on your back. And so we need to yeah. obliterate that. Um, do you have access to email? Yes, ma'am. Okay, my email address is T A M I K A Y. Okay. K-A-Y. Yes. 23. 1, 3. No, 2, 3. Uh, I didn't get that. Uh, the number 23, 2, 3. 2, 3. Yes, sir. Uh, at hotmail.com. At hotmail.com. Yeah, and go ahead and email me, and then I'll be able to send you what you need, and hopefully we can get you on Skype so that you can join us. Also, all of the documentation and everything uh, that we have in uh, file formats is located on chooseyourside.org. Chooseyourside.org. Side. Yes, I uh, want. That's where to uh, find the template. Yes. Yeah, all of them are in there. The utility letters are in there. Um, we ended up doing two of them because the first one, of course, they didn't alter the um, the mailing address. They, they they were maintaining, well, our computer doesn't let us. Well, that's your problem, not mine. I, I don't receive anything in all capital letters. I don't receive anything in the last name. And everything that I'm to receive has to have a temporary post location on it because I'm not there. I'm a state of being. I don't have a placement. And that's what Jesus was trying to say. He says, I have no place to lay my head. Don't have a place to lay your head. I'm always everywhere. I'm the United States of being, so I don't have a physical location. Your fictions created physical locations in geographical states. Geograph only means to write about the earth. It doesn't mean that it's, that it's delineated to anybody. Dominion was maintained with uh, the Articles of Confederation, and they just took it. Uh, we're continuing to receive uh, mail back, which uh, uh, has uh, all capital letters, or it has the regular zip code, uh, or there's something that it needs to still be rejected. And, and, right, uh, and, and again, black it out. When we get things back, the reason they're sending you back those things is under the constitutional theory, um, all bills become law if not rejected or returned within 10 days. And so when you get a bill in the mail and it's not returned in 10 days, it becomes a law. By consent, you've already consented into interacting in that way and altering uh, yourself into a monetary, or monetary unit of exchange, which is what a remittance coupon does. It, it changes you or that bill into a unit of exchange, which is a debt. The Federal Reserve note is a debt. Yes. Okay, my my water bill is due over the, the weekend. Uh, 
what what should I do about it? So right now I would pay it. Um, don't pay it with a remittance coupon. If you can uh, pay it and have somebody else pay it in person for now until you can do the equitable estoppel. Um, there's also an equitable estoppel estoppel by election because what they're presuming is that you're electing them as your representation. And so you need to come in and say, no, I'm taking the third option. Here's my forgiveness and executor doc. I've obliterated that franchise. I'm the executor over that thing. And I, I'm, I'm not a citizen of your corporation. I'm not a citizen of, of your style, which is the United States of America. The United States of America is not a geographical state. It's a style, S-T-I-L-E, as written in the Articles of Confederation. That only maintains that it's a chain of events. So what it is is a criminal action upon you or a bunch of criminal actions upon you, and everybody's been consenting to this. And once you get those docs down, which as you're finding out, the, the chief of police is retiring, they're doing that all over the country. Sheriffs are retiring. Judges are retiring. They don't want to be held accountable. However, what they don't know is that we went back channel. We went to their employer, the House of Lords, and we said, hey, look, you're on the hook for this stuff. And we put a seizure on their clerical goods. So those PERS account, MERS accounts, those aren't any more for the fiction. And there's nothing they can do about it. They can run. And, the, and this is what Revelation said, that when you found out what was written in their book, your wrath would be apparent, and they're going to be hiding beneath the mountains, praying for them to fall upon them and hide them from your wrath. That's exactly what's happening. But they're not going to be able to run very far. There's nothing in it for them. They just think... I, I also... I also heard that I had a court date uh, of the 13th, which is Tuesday, but I hadn't heard from them. So this is good news, I think, isn't it? Absolutely. And make sure that, um, you know, they, they didn't summon you or anything this time, did they? They didn't what? Did You you already sent them the, your fee schedule, didn't you? Um, yes. Oh, well, I don't know. Uh, who to send it to except the the original judge has it but see it switched me to another county and, and I, I don't have the judge's name and uh, um, right that's but, okay you sent it notice to principal's notice to agent so he has a requirement to notify the others and what's going on is that if they want you to appear as the evidence that's going to cost them 33 billion dollars and you've already maintained that contract so they can go ahead and do whatever you want, but you are going to take this over under 46 U.S.C. Um, 313.45. Let me go find it again. I just had it um, earlier. Um, because they've maintained a lien on a public vessel, uh, what that is is they're volunteering to assume the charge under 46... Uh, Suits involving public vessels, 46 U.S.C. Chapter 311, um, you know, they don't have any immunity because they're a foreign state, first of all. Second of all, you've already notified them that you know about the lien and that you're not going to take it. You are a public vessel, and you've called them on this and maintained what is known. It used to uh, require a counterclaim. Now it doesn't require a counterclaim. That's all been nullified and obliterated because they can't do that. I mean, if you come in as a with a complaint, that means you're a co-plaintiff and they're one of them. Well, that's not lawful on its face at all. So they had to take out all of that language and um, redo their little uh, trick and deception game uh, based on, you know, current actions, which is quite ironic. One thing we like is getting in the wedding contract. Right, you're never going to get the wedding contract because they've already um, negotiated it as a negotiable instrument. You're going to get a copy. You're going to get somebody to come in and testify, well, I know about this. You need to impeach them as a witness for want of work. Right, you're never going to get the wedding contract because they've already um, negotiated it as a negotiable instrument. You're going to get a copy. You're going to get somebody to come in and testify, well, I know about this. You need to impeach them as a witness for want of witness because they weren't there at the signing of that contract. They weren't there. And, and on top of that, you, when you go over that, over the, um, you know, no, you, you didn't give me the original, 
When you go above that and say, hey, wait a second, mortgage is unlawful on its face. I can't pledge that I'm dead. And I also can't enter into the borrower's covenant with you because that maintains that I'm giving you my body, you're my pimp. And, and that's an unenforceable contract. If, if, you were, if you were my pimp and I was a prostitute and I decided no longer to be a prostitute, you could not take me into court and compel that contract because it's an unlawful contract on its face. You know, a criminal cannot compel that contract of prostitution. The mortgage itself is a prostitution aspect. The borrower's covenant itself is where you're giving your estate over to another entity, and, and that's your body. You can't do that. You can't ever enter into contract to be a prostitute. You can verbally and orally or whatever you're going to do. However, those are unlawful actions, and a court cannot enforce those things. Yes. <laughs> Well, um, thank you very much, Tammy. Everything will be well. We just have to get everybody on one page, you know, because for so long everybody's been tricked and deceived into accepting all of these concepts and thoughts and colorful ideas, and that's all it's ever been is just color. The appearance, illusion, or guise of something, there's nothing there. Uh, you know, when we came in, and, and that was the neatest thing. Under the Sester K. Act, they're, they're assuming that we're dead and we're lost at sea, and then they get the, they overcome the presumption by mortgage ability and all this. So in court, we said, hey, look, we want a judge to appear. We want a judge here at this hearing. And when we compelled the title of the judge, no judge appeared, and so we had to overrule it. And then we had to declare it dead, and we sent that off to the Department of State which is the Secretary of State, John Kerry, we said, look, that thing, we looked for it everywhere. We couldn't find it, so we have to do this according to 38 U.S.C. 108. Now, the State Department never argued that. That's the clearinghouse, according to the bankruptcy rules. And so what they've been doing is they've put, been putting all of us through corporate receivership, sending our accounts off to the clearinghouse to offset congressional bankruptcy because based on the presumption that we're dead. And we came in and we said, no, we're the, we're the only be living thing here. That, that guy over there, that attorney, he's worshiping a fictional government called the bar. That attorney over there, he says he's working on behalf of the federal state. That thing's been bankrupt since 1933. That's a fiction. So it has to be presumed dead. It's, it's not living. It worships fictional things. It has no idea who it is. And, and, you know, heritage with the last name and everything else. And so that presumption has been overcome. And the presumption now is that the human being is, is be living. It's no longer dead. Are we still connected? We are. Can you still hear us? <laughs> um, see, I was, uh, I was stopped and, uh, I was not given a citation, but I was, I was stopped. And I didn't ID, and so they arrested me and put me in jail. And and then, while in after spending three hours in jail, missing my breakfast, well, uh, I was just going to eat breakfast, and and then uh, they let me appear before a judge. And then uh, I I didn't sign the ticket. They made the ticket out, but I didn't sign it because signing one's name means to enter into a contract with and so I didn't sign my name and then but the judge came in and says you're going back to jail if you don't sign this this uh, this sheet here that uh, you know requires you to to go to court if you don't sign it you're going back to jail so uh, I I hadn't didn't didn't know about you then <laughs> and so so I, I signed it, and then I've, I've appeared in, in a hearing, in a pretrial hearing, and opted for for a uh, a uh, trial by jury. And and then, but I didn't show. I was a no show. I'd contacted you through uh, my friend Brian then, and and he said no, don't go. And so I didn't go. So I was arrested and spent four days uh, on a. Hard bit. Oh, we'll be right back. Stay on the line, please. 
we'll be right back after the break. Okay. Welcome back to Leaving the Farm right here only on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. And remember, we're a listener-supported radio station, and if you'd like to donate, please go to our listener support pages and give as much as you can. Hawk does this out of the kindness of his heart, the goodness of his heart. Um, you know, this is so important to get the word out. And if you like what you're hearing, please keep their station going and, and keep Hawk on the air and keep us on the air. Um, before the break, we were talking to uh, Area Code 903. Um, uh, we were talking about no-show jury trial um, ordinance of the states. And what that is is prior to um, being in... Uh, the system, you know, or, or prior to him knowing us and knowing this process, um, there were mistakes made, appearances before the bank and, and things like that. But now that there is full awareness, then we can lay down the ordinance of the states. This is your law. These things are legislated, and you're letting them know if they'd like to contract with you, you'll be willing to contract for a fee. And this is fully lawful. Uh, we've taken this through U.S. District Court. We've established the United States Court, um, you know, and and things are moving forward. But like I said, we need to all be behind each other. We all mean, need to create that media presence because that's what's required. They've had the media now for I don't know how long and, and stipulating and maintaining to the sheeple that, you know, this is the way things are. We like to live in our consensus reality society. We like to live as fictions. And this is how fictions act. You know, they, they're they acting within corporate psychology. They're acting as commercial product. And we need to step away from that and step all the way outside of 27 CFR 72.11. That maintains that I'm a piece of property, you're a piece of property, and the bank will charge our perpetrators of all the crimes upon us for the use of our body under the nature of rent, according to Malthus. That is Malthusian theory. That's the bottom line. We need to get out of, of all of this and step into our own authority. 903, we're back. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I got to where I, I was uh, in, in jail for four days, and uh, I, I was able to bail, bail myself out because I, was, I had helped uh, a, a lady and, and her husband, and, and she returned the money, but uh, now <laughs> the, the funds are almost depleted. Um, that have, and then I I uh, took all the money out of the bank, and uh, and had I not gotten out, well, my friend Brian uh, and I could not have got the papers uh, that we needed to uh, record the the executor, the forgiveness doc, and the others uh, in the federal court uh, public site. Uh, yeah, public site. And so now that we've done that, things are moving <laughs> real good, I think. Um, I, I haven't been notified of a court date, and I don't expect to be. No, they can't now because if they, if they subpoena you or sign you in any way, they're invoking that fee schedule. And it, on our fee schedule, it says, hey, I'll appear as evidence. I'm not going to come in before you or before your court as a deposit, but I will appear as evidence, which means I'm going to put myself on a document and, and let you know that I'm be living. And if you want to contract with me, that'll be $33 billion, which is the what they're deriving out of each estate under these tranches by the QCIP number. And so it becomes less and less beneficial to maintain these charges against you knowing that it invokes uh, 46 U.S.C. 311. And, and this part of it is they're maintaining a lien on a public vessel. In the um, forgiveness doc and the executor doc, you're coming in and saying, look, I'm a public vessel. I'm no longer dead. I'm here as a living being. And, and as this vessel, you want to bump into me, you're going to assume the charges. That's what 46 U.S.C. 311 says. If you want to charge me with something, that's that's a risk that you take. This whole system is founded on the game of chess and the game of risk. Taking over continents. You are a continent with tenant. Continent. And so when they're taking over your estates, they run the risk of assuming the charges under 46 U.S.C. 311. And they know this. That's, that's the name of the game. 
And so they do not like it when we come back and invoke 46 U.S.C. 311. They run off towards the hills. Sheriffs are retiring. Judges are retiring. Chief of police are retiring. And and the the most uh, profound is that those chief of police, there's an 80% rate now or, or percentage um, uh, probability rate that that chief of police was uh, schooled at Quantico. This is the FBI coming in and pretending to be something other than they are in order to maintain the federal state. But a confederacy is actually a criminal act. It's always a criminal act. It is not maintained as something good or beneficial. It's a group of people getting together and, and engaging in a business venture upon you, which develops the concept of privateering, business license privateers going out attacking and capturing enemy vessels to bring them in front of admiralty courts for condemnation and sale. Now, if you want to still do that, you are subscribing and you are ascertaining that you are acting in war against me, contrary to the United Nations Charter contrary to the rules of war themselves because this war is a psychological war it's a biological war maintained through the FDA the medical industry psychological industry and what they're doing is unlawful on its face even under their laws and now that they're being held accountable they do not like their laws very much because they apply to them as much as they applied formally to the former prisoners of war that did not have a government and the only reason that we were being held prisoners of war is because the government went bankrupt in 1933 so the corporations under the illusion of charity came in and said well we'll hold them and these holding corporations will provide for their benefits but that's that's unlawful on its face but they haven't <laughs> No, no, they were using you through trick and deception, and that's, that's again, it's contrary to the 1929 Geneva Convention. Every action they're maintaining is contrary to their own laws, and contrary to their own illusions, contrary to the Federal Reserve itself, because that's an Ely Masonary Trust. That thing was established to provide for this the citizen if it's injured or harmed in any manner. And what they've done is they've raised it, They've upped the ante on the definition of injury, and now you can injure a stop sign. So they've been paying out benefits of the Elon Masonary Trust to supposed stop signs, but we all know that that goes into attorney pockets through those IOTA trusts. They, they're non-taxable. They're not paying taxes on those. You know, it's just like this, this whole huge business schematic, and when you get down to a bottom line because it's a corporation... Each court is guilty of insider trading because they've got ringers set up, such as psychologists, such as psychiatrists, such as the GL or other expert witnesses. That's insider trading. It's bank fraud on its face. It's counterfeiting on its face because they're transporting or transferring or uh, remitting human beings into Federal Reserve notes. Now, that thing does not look like me. That thing does not look like you, so it's a it's a counterfeit instrument because it must look like and act as the original coin or the original metal or the original composition. The Federal Reserve note does not is not consistent with what I am. Otherwise, it would be something different, and it, it's entirely different based on the fact that a mon monetary value, a gold coin, for example, is not a debt. You know, all the way across the board, their use of their laws is inconsistent with the actual law the way it's written. And, and it, it can't be interpreted to justify any more of their behavior. There's no way in hell that it can be interpreted any other way. I mean, they've tried. They can, they can codify it and they can make another statute for it, but those statutes are unlawful on their face according to the original law or the public law. We have another caller on the line as well, 616... Uh, yeah, that's me. Hi, how are you? I'm great, and I think that the show you're host, hosting is great tonight, too, because you're really exploiting a lot of stuff. Anyways, uh, Rod Class had uh, done a thing in some of his uh, history of, 
and it starts at about 7.01, and I think the date, and I'm not real sure here, is the biggest fraud. And uh, uh, Jeanette and them guys did things on, uh, I mean, you know, they went back in history just like you did, and, you know, they kind of placed all this stuff. My question is, is kind of like, if you had a T-shirt, if you had a T-shirt, what would you put on it? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I know there's so much fraud about uh, or amongst everything, you know, and you don't, you, uh, you know, uh, there's just so much bullshit. But uh, yeah. you know, maybe just, that's what it should say that w on the back of it, maintain that you're a former cartoon. I mean. This is so ridiculous when you go back into the history and into the original charters and you realize what the fiction is and then all of a sudden you're sitting there and you're like, this is fan, just one big long cartoon. And just like Shakespeare said, all the world is a stage and everybody's there to, and act in the play. It, but it goes beyond that because now you've got injury to a stop sign. You've got injury to, to grass. I mean, they charged somebody in Ohio a couple of years ago. He went in and, and mowed a public park. And they charged him for mowing the public park. Oh, okay, I understand that. And Rod Class was talking about um, uh, because we come under uh, agriculture, everybody that's growing something in their yard or the water that they're using to grow something can be, you know, a uh, uh, situation now. Right, they've codified it, and 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 beyond that, they've engineered it to be their own. So the Corps of Engineers comes in to uh, designate each and every county, each and every city, and what they're doing is they're making the water run all downhill into their reservoirs, and then they're finding us for collecting rainwater. Now, Rod Class, you know, I really like Rod Class and what he has to say. However, he is claiming to be a D.C. citizen. And so he's going to get a whole bunch of orders from judges that say, yes, this is an administrative court. Yes, this is an administrative process. However, he's not able to sue them under this uh, Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act because a citizen cannot sue a foreign state. Only a I sovereign understand. state can. I, yep, I understand that because you've said that before. And and he thinks highly, he thinks very highly of you. And yes. I'm, I'm and trying, I do with him as well. Uh, yeah, and I I think that he and you need to uh, need to do a click thing. Here's my here's my thought is is that you know if you can clear the air between one another that some of the other things that he's not apparent to might become apparent to him because he says he's the out, outside thinker box guy. And I I would love for him to, you know, kind of correspond with you and, and make that thing happen because I think that, you know, he'd get a lot further ahead. You know, he's... Uh, In a heartbeat. You know... His first administrative ruling came in October of um, 2012, okay? So okay. when he got that ruling, in November, Congress came in and made sure to put in the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act that a citizen cannot sue a foreign government. That was because of Rod Class. That is how powerful Rod Class is. However, oh, yeah, and I, I, don't get me wrong. I understand that because I've heard some things that came through the grapevine that said, oh, yeah, well, you know, he's really mucked up some things, too. <laughs> but, only that D.C. citizenship. He just has to give that up. And, and it, it's just so amazing and profound what he's been able to accomplish. However, he just can't facilitate the final result that he wants and, and, and what we had done in the case in Northern District of Indiana, we obliterated the 1789 Judiciary Act because all that did was cut up the country into the districts. And what happens is you, when you go into court, like in Arizona, for example, or in Washington State, any court that you're entering in, into, depending on the day of the year, day of the month that you go into that court, you're generating revenue only into the original 13 colonies. 
That's what the 1789 Judiciary Act did. It allowed genera generation of revenue per district. Before that, they didn't have any land. If you go back to um, Marbury versus Madison, they did it by court process, the same thing as the 1789 Judiciary Act. And when they, they did the 1789 Judiciary Act, that was to solidify in the mind of the sheeple that there was actual geographical states that this was referring to. They did not, they don't own any land. They didn't, they, they got consent from the people after 1802 with the Acts of Enablement when they came in and said, well, we're the church, we're going to donate tracts of land districts to these colleges, which is now the Electoral Colleges, of course, but we're going to donate 200,000 acres of land to each college and we're going to call it districts. And the sheeple agreed so that by consent, it appears like they own land, but they still don't own land. That's what we did in the U.S. District Court in northern Indiana. We said, come in and show me your title. Okay. My it's question not. is, um, uh, okay, let's go with the CAFR accounts and the MERS, that, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, is, is some of that stuff being dealt with with what you're doing? Absolutely, because MERS, people see that as a mortgage deal. That is the Municipal Employees Retirement Securities Act, and right. MERS is the Public Employees Retirement Securities Act. All of these things are under ERISA, and what, what the municipal and public employees need to realize is that they are officers. If you go back to the 1929 Geneva Convention, officers are all prisoners of war as well. They have I've, no I've immunity. I've heard you say that. And so uh, the CAF accounts, uh, the QCIP number, because I thought I thought that uh, uh, MERS was one thing, but it's a uh, municipality in what? Uh, or retirement. Employees retirement. Yeah, municipal employees retirement securities. And PERS right. is public employees retirement securities. And you can go over to GEICO. GEICO Insurance has this great commercial product on the television, they're not telling you that that is the government employee insurance corporation. You right. are putting money I, into I that thing. Yeah, and I don't think that half of the... Uh, uh, I've seen this on talk show and stuff like that, that these uh, women uh, that are veterans or whatever even know any of, the, uh, of this. No, no, it's, it's under the action of low-intensity conflict. What, females are being um, inducted or bought through the heart, the action of hearts and minds. So when they are offered welfare benefits or other benefits, this allows them to engage with the system. Now, if you go back to the story of Eve in the Bible, that is the story of Eve. The, the judge or fiduciary, fide, fig tree, that came in and offered her reservation on her rights and said, hey, we can give you all sorts of stuff if you claim these titles. If you claim to be a female, if you claim to be a male, and you can see this as it happens with Adam and Eve. Adam was given the power to name all things. And so they took up all these concepts, and the first action of the law merchant is selling you concept. Then you have to buy the rights and benefits to come with the concept, and then you have to purchase the rights and benefits that are stolen by the concept. So if, if uh, for example, I didn't have the right to vote at one point in time, Congress pointed the finger at you, the male, and said, you're a bad boy. You're not allowing her the right to vote. It was by congressional action that I was, I had my right to vote taken away. And so I had to buy my right by court process from Congress to offset its bankruptcy. And, and that's a strange concept in its own, but I understand some of it. And I, I'm understanding some... Because uh, I understand some of the welfare thing, you know, what I'm saying is because you talked about that. Uh, when somebody uh, goes out for welfare and then they're, even if they're going through a divorce and then they're trying to get welfare for the kids and all that other stuff, I kind of understand that. You know. That one has two functions because what, what she's not realizing is, is that she's a piece of property. 
That is right. how shadow is created. She's worshiping another father. The fiduciary is her father. So she's asking it, Daddy, can I have a benefit of my estate? Bottom line. Daddy, can you give me this? Daddy, can you give me a right? Daddy, can you? I need this now. Okay. Now, when you go into Black's Law Dictionary and you find out what an issue is, an issue is a descendant. So when you're laying issues before the court, you are giving your children to the bank. And they get to now be tricked out by court process. This is all low intensity conflict. Yeah, I try to explain that to some of my friends and, you know, as I said, you know, the race thing and a lot of other stuff is, it's a facade to cover up for so much bullshit. Absolutely. And they, and they laugh at me, you know, to a certain extent, but they're starting to really see the reality of it. Right, and it, and it takes a lot. That's what Jesus was maintaining in Revelation. He says, you know what, an angel's going to come down from the heaven, and this is you. An angel's going to come down, and it's going to offer you a scroll, and it's going to say, well, eat it up. It's going to taste like honey on the lips, and it's going to be bitter on the belly. It's going to be really, really freaking hard to swallow. And this is really, really hard to swallow because all of this time we have been worshiping that thing. We've been patronizing it and we've been allowing it to represent us, thinking that it was it had our best interest in mind. When in reality, it's always been a war upon us, a, a psychological war upon us. And part of low intensity conflict is winning hearts and minds. And I'll read that real quick. Winning hearts and minds is a concept occasionally expressed in the resolution of war, insurgency, and other conflicts in which one side seeks to prevail not by the use of superior force, but by making emotional or intellectual appears to sway supporters of the other side. The use of the term hearts and minds to reference a method of bringing a subjugated population on side was first used during the Malayan emergency by the British, who employed practices to keep the Malayans' trust and reduce a tendency to side with ethnic Chinese communists, in this case by giving medical and food aid to the Malays and indigenous um, I don't know. Um, where did Hans go? We won't go by in your life. You won't regret. Sort of leaving the 1929 Geneva Convention under Congress to offset congressional bankruptcy. Judges were just indicted because they take an oath to con Congress to offset their congressional bankruptcy by throwing you and I in there, which is human trafficking. The judges were also indicted. That's wow. why our judge was able to come in and overrule their judge because we found we have public law on our side. They were facilitating statute and leg legislation. They are actually barred by their own law, the 1832 Nullification Proclamation that Andrew Jackson had handed down from arguing statute or legislation in a court case. They cannot even appeal our our orders. They cannot right, appeal our overrule docs because they are stopped by the 1832 nullification proclamation that Andrew Jackson handed down because if you argue statute and leg legislation in a court case, you are in that proclamation, you are to be held in contempt of court. Right. I, I'm not doubting the legal aspects, I mean the lawful aspects of what you've done, but what I'm asking is being that we know we're dealing with gangsters who are murderers and pedophiles, okay? Uh let's let's let me just use an example like say uh a case like John Gotti versus the state of New York or something. Okay? If John Gotti knows that there are witnesses that are going to be testifying against him and there's no way he's going to get away with it okay and he can't he can't generate his freedom legally he still could exercise unlawfully to have these witnesses killed before the court day comes and what i'm saying to you is what makes you think they're going to follow the law well they already are and that's the thing is it the the whole entire system is yeah, but set what up I'm saying is under Okay, wait a second, because it's very important, and I know this is, like, mind-boggling, but the rules of the game are Roman law. And when you go back into the foundations of Roman law, they're able to own the Roman citizen because it claims to be a citizen. Okay? It's okay. lost its seat. That, those are the foundations. 
it, it always reverts back to something like the 1666 Cesare Cavai Act. Okay, so the Roman citizen is now judges, attorneys, bankers, Congress, and Senate. They have already been declared dead and lost at sea. Those are the rules of the game. They're, I'm not dead. I am sitting here at the location where I located myself to the State Department last week. Located myself to the State Department last week, and I am still here because these are the rules of the game. And I bet my life on my process this time. They know well, what exactly I'm saying is, is they, they just realize that they're screwed. Absolutely. And, and and they have and, each other, but it's more cost effective. When they're out there seeking us and the privateers are out there attacking us, they're getting a hundred dollar fine. They're getting a two hundred dollar fine. They're getting a thousand dollar fine. They're, they're no longer making money on us. And so therefore they were trying to put, put us into third world status. There's no loyalty among psychopaths. They don't care who they're going. They don't care who they're going after because all that. They so what, what I'm signs. asking you is what is, it's, you have done the right thing and won their judgment. Who's to stop them? Like, put it this way. Well, if I I, and, and that's if I, so what I'm asking is this. If I filed a lawsuit against somebody, right, who, who did me wrong and the judge says, okay, you owe Mr. Champagne $2 million. Well, if that person has somebody come to my house and blow my brains out, now he, he doesn't have to pay a dead man. What's to stop them from basically saying, okay, you know what? Revolution Radio, standing tall not only for the people of America, but for the human beings of the world.